Um, my name is Martin Barter. I'm uh, with Edward Jones and Zika. And um, I just want to, you know, ask me to go up and, and I'm not going to talk about the market. I'm not going to talk about interest rates. I'm not going to talk about uh, I can return you more money. I can talk about I can lose you more. I don't want to talk about anything like that at all. Uh, I've been doing this for almost two decades. And uh, I just wanted to, to kind of give you a couple of things that I've seen over for the last long time that, that people kind of make mistakes when they're, or some things, maybe not necessarily mistakes, but things could be easier if you had done. Um, one of the big things, if you own stock certificates, those are a nightmare if, if you die holding physical stock certificates. So whatever you have to do to get those transferred in, we just, we got some the other day. Um, but there's, apparently they're starting to send out notices saying, hey, you got stock certificates, please transfer them into your brokerage account, your computer shares, whatever. Um, but those things are, they're, they're trying to do away with all those. So that's a big thing that's going to make everybody else's life easier if you take care of that now. Um, check your beneficiaries on your accounts, your transfer on deaths, your beneficiaries, whatever you want to call them. Uh, piggybacking on, on what I said earlier, my dad died last year and the, we had already taken care of everything. The only thing we did not take care of is he had a vehicle that was in his name only, and that's when I learned you to put a TOD on a car. So now I tell everyone of my clients, put a TOD on your car. If you had no spouse, whatever, put a TOD on your car. So I would highly recommend that since I just went through that myself. Um, but that's a big thing. Um, and then uh, I'll kind of turn it over to Matt here, but the other big thing is Nobody ever, ever, ever wants to talk about life insurance or long-term care insurance because they're expensive. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard when I talk about long-term care insurance, somebody will almost always say, my long-term care insurance is a 38 to the head or something really smart out like that because they, but then something happens and I'm guessing at least a hundred times the next question is, how do I hide my assets? What do I gotta do? So then you start talking about your own living trust and, and there's there's a couple of things in the state of Ohio. The state of Ohio is one of only seven states that can do some other stuff that's really kind of, um, it is what it is, but that's, that's a big one. So long-term care insurance is really expensive. It really is. And uh, not everybody qualifies for it. But that's a big thing. Make sure you don't do the wrong things at the wrong time. Make sure you get your TODs and your beneficiaries, things like this. Uh, try and consolidate stuff as much as you can because if you have 15 different bank accounts and 12 different brokers, try and get it down to one because everybody reaches a point in their life where they just want to deal with less than knuckleheads. And if you transfer everything in one, it's probably not going to do anything at all to benefit you and it's probably not going to do anything at all to benefit the person that brings it in, but it's going to benefit the kids, or the spouse, or the beneficiary, or whoever. Just try and make things easier for everybody else. It may cause you a little bit of time and pain and effort and things like this, but just try and get things easier to everybody else. That's the big stuff. So uh, I'll give it over to Matt. He can talk about whatever he wants to talk about. But he is a Cleveland Browns fan. <laughs> so is Martin. No, he's not. But Martin's a, a deal with his uh, uh, Hi, I'm Matt Bennett. Uh, um, I'm an insurance agent. That's all. I, I sell insurance. We, we sell you a product. Um, but that's the wrong thing to think about insurance agent. If your insurance agent wants to sell you a product, you're in the wrong lot. You tell me when you're going to die, I'll tell you what you need in life. I'll tell you how much you're going to need, how much you're going to take care of, what you want to... The uh, majority of people in this room think, hey, I'm going to live and I'm going to give this, I want to give stuff to my kids. Well, insurance can help make sure that happens. Lawyers can make sure that that stuff happens. But you have to be the one to make sure that stuff happens. Um, to help, like, like Martin said, long-term health care coverage, the earlier you buy it, when you're in good health, number one, is cheaper. Number two, you can afford. Uh, number number two, it'll you know it'll be out there. There's so many different plans. There's hybrids. There's life insurance attached. There's thousands of different things that you can pick. 
But if you wait till you're 75 years old, you're not going to be eligible. If you wait much past my age of 45, if you wait until your 50s and you have any health problems, you might get denied. The issue with insurance is as in estate planning or in a end of life planning, uh, you have to do it. The earlier you do it, the better it is. When it comes to life insurance itself, there's so many different things. Everybody talks, well, I have a job, I have life insurance. Well, yeah, you do. You have a, you have a term, you have a group policy that's termed out the day, you, the day that you quit, it ends. You have no more coverage. You can, buy, you can buy term insurance, which means I'm buying this period of time. I'm buying 20 years, 30 years, and it's based on your health insurance, health status at that time. But the closer you get to D-Day, D-Day's death day, the more it's going to be. Term insurance, does they don't like to give that to you after you're about 65 to 70. They just don't like to do it because average age is 75. So why would they sell you for something that they know they're going to pay out? Because, no, no offense, insurance agents and financial, but we're all here to make a little bit of money. But, we're, but ultimately, what you have to decide is, is what do I want to do with my estate? Am I doing this to prepare for me and my wife? If we're going to, we know that, you know, I don't have the greatest uh, family history. I know I'm going to have some health problems. What, what do I need to figure out now? Am I going to go to a nursing home? Am I, you know, am my kids going to take care of me? Do I want to have, you know, a health, okay. Also looks at your pension, your social security, the money that you have in the bank. Well, if you want to protect that wealth and pass it on to the next generation, there's so many different tools that you have to do now to make sure that happens. But if you don't do those things now, like uh, making sure you set up a trust or, or, or um, having long, if you have a whole life policy, whole life means that it's, it's not a term, it's for your whole life. It covers the whole period. Odds are those are smaller amounts. Most people buy those to do it to funeral arrangements, do end of planning. And a lot of people, the people sitting in this room that work in the funeral business will tell you that they have a lot of people that pre-plan that come in and buy insurance or buy, buy plans based on what their need is or based on what they want. So they're going to buy their, you know, pre-plan all their stuff. They can buy a policy through most insurance, most, most uh, funeral homes to get that accomplished. But if you don't do it until, if you do it ahead of time, it's affordable. If not, there will be your family's going to pay on average fifteen thousand dollars for a funeral. And who would you rather pay, insurance company or out of pocket? If money's not an issue, then you know, hey, guess what? The kids will have the money. You write the check. Hey, everything's good. Life goes on. We'll we'll celebrate and have a good time. But that limits what wealth or what you can pass on to the next generation. And I think all of us from the, that dash in between is what we're trying to make sure we preserve. Um, and we want to make sure that I've worked all this hard to get to where I am now. I don't want it to just all go away because of I went to the nursing home or I went to this. Well, if you don't start planning for it at an earlier age, all that money will go to the nursing home. It will go to assisted living. It will go to those places because it, with those plans not set in place, and, and I can't stress this, financial planners like Martin, insurance agents like me, we're not here to sell you something. We're here to educate you to make sure that you get the best knowledge in, in regards to what products you need. Ultimately, I can't make the decision for you. I can't tell you what you can afford, but I can tell you what's out there. And the earlier you go and start this process, the easier it is for you. Um, everybody in this room probably has auto insurance, home insurance, and everybody probably has a 401k or something that they have made. Go talk to those people. They work for you. You pay them money already. But if they're if you go in there and they automatically want to sell you sell you something instead of telling you about something, say thank you and go find somebody that wants to educate you. Because this period in your life, you're in this room for one thing: to educate yourself to make sure that you don't pass on issues or problems to somebody else. And at the end of the day, you want your kids to worry about one thing or your family members when, you're, when it's your time to pass. You. Now, Martin, Martin, Martin will tell you, I've seen it. Um, money, after people die, creates problems. 
you have some kids that don't care, and then you have other kids that care. You have so, but making sure it's all laid out and your beneficiaries are stated exactly how it's supposed to be, and this is going where it's. But guess what? You're not there to deal with it, and guess and the lawyers of the world have to, you know, hey, this is printed out in black and white. If you don't do these things right now, you're gonna cause. You're not gonna worry about it because you're not gonna be here. But it causes problems for maybe your spouse or maybe your 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 kids, stepkids, or anything else. So ask questions. If you don't understand, keep asking questions. If they're trying to sell you something with without get, really giving you the full information, find somebody else. I, I, I mean, I I can't stress that in, in in a bigger way. If you feel comfortable with your setting right now, then that means you did the homework. Uh, if you don't. Do the homework now, because um, like me at 45, I have I already have my will. I have everything in place for my. You know, I even have a key man for life insurance if I die. Uh, I have I have whole life insurance that will take care of. You know, I have my 401k. All my everything I I think I hope is set up. But there's always something you forgot. Um, so. That's all I really have, and I know that there's probably a question. Yeah, Martin, Martin, you have anything else? Martin, I'd like you to talk about, do you have milestones where you say, as you approach this age, these may be things you start thinking about. Let's say you're invested, and you know, as obviously your risk tolerance changes and what have you. Can you give like some general guidance that when you reach in these ages, maybe you want to start having these conversations? I would change the question, I think, <laughs> to uh, a lot of times, first of all, most of what we see on the TV or listen to on the radio, they're there trying to sell you bananas. They don't know who you are, they don't care what you are, whatever. So when you hear, start hearing things like, well, you should have your age and bonds and little stocks and this, but, well, they don't know who you are. They don't know what your risk tolerance is. They don't know, they don't know nothing about you. They're there to sell you bananas or so. That's all they care. So when you start hearing things like, you need to have $1.2 million when you die, baloney. We sit down every day and talk to people and say, okay, how much money do you have? What are your bills? Because it doesn't matter how much money you have, it's how much do you spend. So if you have $200,000 and you have some type of a pension or you have uh, Social Security, things like this, depending on how you live, you may make it. I sat down the other day, a couple, a nice couple. I said, okay, how much money do you need a month when you retire? $30,000. Okay, that seems like an awful lot, but whatever, let's see if you can do it, and they can make it. So don't tell me you need a million dollars. When those people need multi million dollars, and this person over here needs $150,000 retired. So don't listen to the idiots on TV. They don't know who you are. I'm an idiot too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Anyway, so um, there is no set rule where your asset allocation should be this because it's up to you. And if your financial advisor or planner, whatever, is saying, well, our model says it, no, no, your model, no. It's up to you. It's up to your risk tolerance. If you want to own nothing but Procter and Gamble stock, God bless you. Let's figure out if that's going to work for you. Whatever. So uh, I changed your question. Yes, you but did. that answer, no, my I, version of your question? I think that could be just fine. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. And then my question back to Matt, to expand the time. Can you explain question. exactly what long term life insurance or, or Long term, long term, long term care insurance is is that. That means when you become um, to a point where you have to go into a nursing home or assisted living facility, it's insurance that you purchase that helps pay for the care, your care. Now remember, most of us will have a Social Security pension that comes in, and we'll have maybe other insurance or other pensions. That money is going to be spent first for your care. Okay because you're now in the there to be taken care of. So that money is first. Long-term care is over and above money 
So if it costs seven to ten thousand dollars a month, which it does, about ten thousand dollars a month is what you should think right now. That's what it's going to cost you for just you, not you and your spouse, just you, to to live in the nursing home. So okay, say you get six thousand dollars a month in pension and benefits. Well, that reduced your you reduced yours to four thousand dollars a month. So from that, now you got a net, you have a negative balance of thousand. Where am I coming up with that? Long term care care insurance, you buy a pot of money. For most cases, you buy a um, pot of money, say two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand dollars. You buy that pot of money. That only and all that money, all that it goes towards is your care. The 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 money over and above what you can't pay for. Now some people have really good pensions and and, and plans and different things. And so they don't have to you don't spend but maybe a thousand dollars a month or whatever. But people that are, um, I'll say, not say destitute, but people that don't have as much funds to pay, then that's when they're nesting. Then, the, the, and I want to stress this: long-term care is only for people that have the finances to buy it. Okay. If you're to the point where you're going to be destitute, or you're only you only have your house and a little bit of pension coming in, odds are you're going to go the Medicaid route, and Medicaid is going to end up paying paying your way through the nursing home through that route. So there's so many variables when it comes to long-term care insurance, um, life insurance. There's hybrid models. You could go out and buy life insurance that has long-term care uh, long-term care in, included in it. You could go out and, and and have a hybrid model. There's all kind. There's so many different options. It's all based on age, health, and what you can afford, and what you think you're going to need when you become destitute. Hey, so yes, ma'am. We gotta add to what you said. Yep. Because when clients come to <coughs> us, uh, we talk to them about long-term care insurance. I don't sell it. This this is another cartwheel issue for me because I think it's so important. But what I want the younger people here to know is that Medicare and your health insurance do not pay for assisted living and nursing home care. That is a huge misconception. That's why you need long-term care insurance. And gentlemen, I, would like, I say this as gently and kindly as I can. I would like you to change how you talk about the cost of long-term care insurance because it's a cost-benefit analysis. It is. Nursing home is, and assisted living is probably the most expensive thing families would ever have to pay for. So, and I, I do, in my, in my work, I am trying to dispel the notion to people that, that long-term care insurance is expensive. My husband and I bought our policies, each of us has a policy, around age 50. Our premiums today are $90 a month, just so, for a half a million dollars worth of long-term care insurance. Just so you, you know, when you hear the word expensive, yes, we've sacrificed over the years for that, but I wanted you to know that. And, and she's 100% right, and the reason she's, that premium is the way it is because when she got it, she got it at age 50. And I was healthy. And she was healthy. And, and I want to stress that too. 99% um, of the time that people come see me and Martin, they're 65, 67, retiring. Now they want to, now they want to talk about long-term health care. At that point, and I should stress, that's when it's very expensive. Odds are you're not in great, great health and you're closer to dying and or being in assisted living or into a nursing home facility. So you're, you're correct when it comes to that, but there's a lot of things that factor into it. Like me, if I buy it at 45, it's going to be half the cost or less than somebody that buys it at 65. Um, it, it's all about planning, planning. The earlier you do anything, number one, it's cheaper on you. And number two, you have more power. You have the ability to um, make your directives known and to have options later on. And that's what people don't understand is if you make insurance decisions and, and buy all these products, it gives you power when you need them. And in regards to um, 
going into a nursing home. If not, then you're you're related to whatever income that you have coming in, and then it starts then it starts coming out of your 401ks or, or your retirement pl plans to pay for your assisted living in your home. So, and as that money trickles down, eventually, you know, if you have a home still, they'll have to make you sell your house if you haven't sent it. As, well, I mean, if you're getting to Medicaid, yeah, if you're single, and there's certain there's all these different rules, and you have to know about that now because if you don't. You could create a you could create a lot of problems for yourself. Well, not for yourself, but you could create a lot of pro problems for you. Yeah, you know the sheet. Yes, yes, I do. Um, I have some questions for Matt or Mark. On a long-term health care, um, what are the triggers that enact that? Like, if you're like, say, you have long-term health care and you're 45 years old at 48 into a car accident and you can put into a facility like that. It automatically, I mean. Does long-term health care take it? If your insurance doesn't cover, you're, you're and, and it's all, and, and so that pot of money is is there for your, no matter what you use it, so. What, what I, I don't know if this is your question or not, but the, there's six activities of daily life. Yep. That, that you, you have, have to qualify for. Yeah, or, exactly. If you, you don't qualify for two, so it's, it's bathing, Feeding, toileting, transferring, I can't remember if the other two, but there's, there's oh, six, yeah. six categories set aside, and if you can't do two of them, your long-term care clicks. Yep, exactly. And um, so, no matter what age, all that. But remember, you have a benefit. You bought a benefit. It's a mount. And that amount... It can also run out. Yeah, it can also run out. And then at that time, then if that benefit runs out, that's a lifetime That's a lifetime benefit, too. If that might be... If it runs out, then you're looking at out of pocket, and then after out of pocket goes away, after that goes down, then you apply for Medicaid, and then they'll look at assets and different, and then you have to go the Medicaid route. But if you've got long-term care insurance, you bought your time so you can do Medicaid planning and maybe transfer assets out of your name right. so you can yeah. apply for Medicaid. And, and, then, and that's well, that's why I stress that you when you do this, then you also should at the same time. Talk to your lawyers and talk, make sure that, and your financial planners, and make sure that you have everything set up because when you buy this product, you want to make sure that nothing else counts against it if that month. Because say you buy $250,000 and it runs out and you're still alive and you're still healthy, you hopefully have worked with your lawyers and your financial planners to make sure the rest of your assets are not going to be touched. And then it goes into Medicaid and then Medicaid picks up the bill and moves forward. 10, 10 or 15 years ago, the state of Ohio passed something called the Ohio Partner Plan. So if you have uh, long-term care insurance, and let's just say you keep someone on a pot of money, let's say your pot of money is $500,000. That's how much long-term care insurance would pay out. That $500,000 is now exempt from your Medicaid spend down in the state of Ohio. The state of Ohio says you provide for the first 500. So let's say your state is a million dollars. And everybody worries about spending all the way down, and now my kids aren't gonna get anything. The Ohio Partner Plan says whatever you had in long-term care insurance is exempt from a Medicaid spend down. So in my example, you have a million dollars, you have five hundred thousand worth of insurance, you're never gonna spend below that five hundred thousand dollars. Never say never, but you're not gonna spend below the five hundred thousand dollars because that's exempt from a Medicaid spend down. Explain Medicaid spend down. Is that the Medicaid spend down is you have to spend a certain amount of your, your assets. If you're married, you're allowed to keep a little bit more, 123,000 or something like this, I think. Um, but if you're single, it's something like $2,500 or some stupid, really low number like that. So yeah, so you have to spend all of your money. So everything you work your entire life to save, theoretically, gets spent on long-term care until you're virtually destitute. Then the state comes in and says, okay, we got it from here. Well, and this is my turn to jump in. Yeah, we have people that show up at Dodds and literally walk in the door and just say, I've got a Medicaid spend down issue. I don't care what you sell me. I just need you to write up a contract for that number. Not a great way to plan your memorial, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I need this check. It's, it's going on, and we'll worry about it later. And there's times where they're in a cemetery where they maybe can only have a flush marker, 
and they've got $5,000 to spend down. I'm not saying that we can't sell a $5,000 flush marker, but odds are <laughs> it's probably a little bit more than a, you know, a single marker would be. But they, they're like, I don't have a choice. That's why having these conversations is so important, because the last thing you want to do is go race around to funeral homes and, and cemeteries and, and monument companies and try to get all this money spent in a panic. It's just terrible. Neil, are there, there are qualified things that you can spend down. You just can't go yeah, out. You can't go on a shopping spree. Right. It has to be and, and why end of life related. What you can't life. spend down, then what happens to the rest of your assets? Well, technically, at that time you're paying out of pocket, your money comes out. If you, You're you not going to qualify for Medicaid at that time. If you have money, as long as you have money, <laughs> you're paying out of pocket. Once you become, there's no, technically, Medicaid is such a difficult process, and there's so, so many different aggregates, houses, different things. That's why, you know, five-year look-back periods. I mean, there's so many different things that you have to look. So it's hard to really, like, say, tell you how, how it's going to work. But ultimately, in, in the 5,000 view that you look at is your money that you have, Medicaid is not going to kick in until you have no money. You're, you're, now, the key is, is if you have, say you give money throughout the year and you need to spend it, there's things that they can let you spend it on to, to meet your, your spend down. But it, there's so many variables that go into all, all, all your questions that you ask. But at that time, you need to have people that you can go to and ask. And a lot of those people are your financial planners and your, your lawyers, uh, us as insurance agents, all, and the county. The county that you live in, you have, a, you have a person that handles your Medicaid if you're applying for Medicaid. They have a list and they have rules and they'll have everything that, they'll lay it all out for you exactly how you need to handle your money to make sure that you qualify for Medicaid or stay eligible for Medicaid. Because if you say you're eligible for Medicaid and then you inherited a ton of money, uh -oh. yeah, then we have big problems. So then that causes other issues. So there's so many variables that go into that, but what we try to prevent is through financial planning and through long-term health care and, and whole life insurance and different things of that nature, is to never ever have to get to the Medicare, Medi Medicare st Medicaid stage. So I, I've been working with hospice, or at a hospice of Dayton, and they have told me that my mother would only be allowed to have $2,000 in her account and she has a home that if somebody has been living in her home for two years, they could never touch it. Um, can I get to that? You can, she can try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can try to go. Yeah, I mean, th there's so many different things to that, too. I mean, if there is a person, if there is a family member who's been caring for your mother and living with your mother for two years, then the home can actually be transferred to the caregiver. It's not just anybody living in your living home. Okay, it has to be a family member? No. Yes, and, and a doctor has to certify that. Okay. That they live with their family. That they, yeah, there's a form, there's a, a Medicaid form that the doctor has to fill out. Yeah, it can't be just anybody, it has to be, in fact, I think it even has to be certain family members. Yeah. Any other questions? And, and the home is exempt from your Yes. But in like the case of like my grandparents, my grandmother passed away in March, and then my grandfather was by himself, and then he had to go to an assisted nursing home, and, and then, then he passed away in, in August. So there was issues that when they were together, they weren't, but when they're separate, then they all, you know, you know other rules play in the part. So I can sit here and tell you in a perfect word, we can, we, we can help you plan for a lot of this stuff. We can, but there's always going to be something that pops up that, oh, this shows up, or this shows up, or I got this problem, or I got this issue. Um, so the key is, is knowing who to go ask, understanding that you are in power of your own decisions. Right now, especially, you you have the opportunity to make your plan, and you don't trust it. I told somebody earlier. If you don't trust the person that you're sitting down with talking about insurance or selling your house or you know your lawyer or buying, 
go find somebody you do. It's your life, it's your decision, it's about what you want, and if you don't like it, go find, go find somewhere where you will. So, anything else to add? No, um, I just hope you, you got something out of this uh, information day, and, and it's, uh, uh, the biggest takeaway I would say is uh, get less knuckleheads in your life and try to stream with flying things. And, Take care of your kids, take care of your next of kin, take care of whatever. Um, I, I'm a financial advisor, I can't do anything. I'm not a financial doer, I'm only a financial advisor. So whatever your financial advisor tells you or suggests or whatever, uh, make sure that you actually do it because they're probably trying to help you out, believe it or not. Uh, so listen to them, they'll, they'll probably make your life easier. That's all I got. Let's give it up for our